As you know, the origin of the colonization of the Liberian coast, uh, I believe, began in the 1820s, where some people in the United States felt that slaves who had been freed uh, would really be incompatible with uh, life in the United States, and therefore they would be much better, it would be better both for the United States and for them to go back to their country, their area of origin, which is West Africa. So this was the beginning of colonization of, uh, of the Liberian coast. Now, when Liberia became an actual republic, I don't remember the exact date, but from that time on, I believe it was in the 1840s, uh, the United States established diplomatic relations uh, with Liberia. So it was, uh, there was an opportunity for the United States to have a colony like the British and the French had. Uh, it was unfortunate that, the United, that Liberia did not become a U.S. colony because the countries around Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, French Guinea, and Ivory Coast, all had much more development as a result of colonization. They had roads, they had health services, they had education services, which, my, which Liberia lacked. Uh, they did not have the resources to have that because there was not a colony. It was an independent republic. Uh, so U.S. Liberian relations were quite normal throughout the 19th century, right up to the Second World War. Uh, if, the, if Liberia had been a colony, it would have been a bigger country because the British and the French were snipping off parts of Liberia uh, and getting away with it. There was no one stopping them. Uh, so I think the experience, uh, the U.S. probably, uh, both Liberia and the U.S. would have been better off if it had been a U.S. colony like the Philippines. The Philippines was set free right after the Second World War. I'm doing some research now on the history of U.S. policy in Africa, and I came across a conversation between President Roosevelt in 1945 and uh, some African-American journalists and they said, well, the war is about to be ending. Uh, when, what are you going to do about Africa? And Roosevelt had never even thought about Africa. So he said, go over there and come back and give me your recommendations. So they went to Liberia, and they went to Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Ivory Coast. And they came back, and they saw Roosevelt. And they said, he said, what did you find? He said, Liberia is a disgrace to the United States. All these other countries are wealthy. Liberia is very poor. So Roosevelt wrote a memo saying, let's do something for uh, Liberia. And the, what they did was build up the port of Monrovia. This was the beginning of the port of Monrovia. Now, of course, Roberts Field was built because of the Second World War, where we needed this, air, uh, this field for sending our forces through to the Middle East and beyond. And my own brother, who was old enough to be in the war, landed at Roberts Field, and then he went on to India when he was in the U.S. Army doing that. So the whole history of U.S.-Liberian relations was one of good relations, but keeping Liberia at arm's length. Well, the whole reason for Liberia's existence was to send freed slaves away from the U.S. So therefore, we wanted to keep them away. We didn't want to keep them close, you see. So that was framed the whole relationship and I sympathized with Samuel Doe in his meeting with Schultz when he said, you know, we're doing everything for you. We're your best friend in Africa. Whenever there's a vote in the UN, we're with you. We defend you all the time. And what are you doing for us? Not much. Uh, when the US invaded uh, Panama, there was a vote in the UN to condemn the US for invading a sovereign country. And the vote was something like 160 to 3 against the U.S. Now, who were the three who voted to support the U.S.? Israel, Liberia, and the U.S. were the three votes. <laughs> so Liberia was, we could always count on Liberia. We needed the airfield to have it. We didn't even have to ask permission. We had these antenna fields for the CIA and the Voice of America. Yeah. It was all there. And yet the U.S. 
sort of took Liberia for granted, and I'm just giving you my personal opinion <laughs> there. But what really troubled me is that I was not allowed to go with the scheme to get Doe out and bring Taylor to power, which would have averted the, the total, the total. Thing. And also, I learned a lesson as a diplomat that we should not we should not tolerate surrogate wars. I don't think the people of Liberia are ready for a war against Doe. They may have disapproved of him or unhappy with him, but I don't think they wanted a civil war where tribes would be killing each other. But it was brought about by outsiders. It was brought about by outsiders, and it was totally unjustified. And I think this should be brought to the light of day because uh, surrogate wars continue in Africa today. They're, they're continuing. There's the war in Rwanda was like that. The war in Darfur is a surrogate war. And I think it's time for blame to be pointed at those people outside of countries who start these things.